The Islamic blasphemy laws are back. Not that they ever really went away. This has been going on for years. A film called The Lady of Heaven was pulled by Cineworld this week following protests by mobs of the usual characters, the same characters that meant a teacher in Batley had to go into hiding, the same characters that were responsible for death and destruction all over the world during the so-called Danish cartoons fiasco. View, I hear, are still showing it. Good for them. I'd probably go and see it myself just for that, but I won't. Look, I've been watching news on this and every single discussion of it has done the same thing. They've brought on Muslims to talk about it. And there's mild disagreement about whether or not Islam allows depictions of Muhammad. There is apparently a depiction of Muhammad in this film. Whether this is allowed or whether this is blasphemous, that's the debate. No one, anywhere, in the mainstream press, and I include GB News in this, is actually talking about the fact that blasphemy and apostasy carry the death penalty in the Islamic faith. Nobody. This just isn't allowed to be said. It's as if it's surreal. It's like living in some alternate universe. We're talking about something without talking about it. We're skirting around the edges. Even on GB News, you get this peace be upon him stuff. No one is telling the truth about this. And the truth is that blasphemy carries the death penalty in Islam. And there may be individual Muslims who don't agree with this or like it, but those Muslims are not calling the shots. They are not the ones with authority. We are under a de facto blasphemy law, an Islamic blasphemy, blasphemy law in this country. We have been going back to the Rushdie affair. It's the reason nothing is ever done about crime. Rape gangs, for example, nothing is done about them because violence will, from Muslims will be the response. The threat of violence, it comes from the fact that the Islamic faith imposes the death penalty for blasphemy and apostasy. And that's why here in the UK, thanks to massive Muslim immigration, we now have this, threats of death, danger, censorship, violence, threats of violence. We have ex-Muslims who can't live freely and in safety because apostasy carries a death penalty. That's where it comes from. And that's why we appease Muslims all the time. Always, always, we always give in, whether it's on grooming gangs or FGM or child marriage or forced marriage or any of the other horrors associated with this religion. We always give in. And we give in because we don't really know what we're dealing with here as a society. And we're frightened of it because we are a civilized society of oh, we where. So we don't really know what to do when thugs threaten us with violence, when there's this constant background noise of do what we say or else. We don't quite know what to do with it. So to keep the peace, the Islamic version of peace, we give in every time. I said that most there are some Muslims, many Muslims probably, who don't agree with the blasphemy element. But the death for, for blasphemy element, but this still won't be discussed. There's no admission from such Muslims that actually the problem comes from the religion itself. None. And if you dare to say so, you'll be a racist, far right, fascist, all the rest of it. So the Muslims who say that death for blasphemy is wrong either are lying, in complete denial, or don't know their religion as well as they think they do. Anyone, by the way, can study Islam and understand this. That's what I've done, what many other people have done. But until we start telling the truth, we're just going around 
in circles. And we're going further and further and further into violence and censorship. A free country is not free. And don't forget about this. Don't let COVID and globalism and all the other issues that we face make you forget about this. This is still here. And it's still as important as it was before COVID and all the restrictions and all the loss of freedom we suffered. And Agenda 2030 and all of these things that rightly concern us. Don't forget about this. It's still there. It's still important. And it's becoming more and more important. And I'll tell you why. All those people, thousands and thousands and thousands, coming in here illegally on the Kent coast and elsewhere, Muslims. And they are being distributed around the country. So nowhere will be left untouched by this. That's a problem, that's, that's what's gonna happen. And even little towns like Linton on Ouse in Yorkshire are about to find out that nowhere will be left untouched by this. This matters, the truth of it matters. And if those Muslims who object to this violence in the name of their religion, if they are sincere, they need to start admitting where the problem comes from. It comes from the religion itself. Now it's time, it really is time someone started talking about this in the mainstream media. It is time, but they won't. And that is a huge part of the problem. And they won't talk about it because they're afraid to talk about it. And are in being afraid, admitting, admitting that what I say and what others say is true. And they can't allow us to be right keep telling the truth about this understand its importance and understand that unless we confront the truth and unless we close the borders to this this is our future violence segregation censorship it's our present but it's certainly going to be worse in the future speak up and if there's anyone, anyone at all in the press with an ounce of courage, speak to someone who knows the truth about this. The British public deserve that courage. My fear though, is that they're not going to get it. Word of mouth is what we have, courage is what we have, and we will continue, and I will continue to tell the truth. We need the truth. No more Islamic censorship. Let's have some courage. View does seem to have a bit of courage. So it's a little way we can fight back. We can support View. We can even go and see it. Anything we can do to fight back is always worthy. On a separate note, this coming Monday, I will be in Devon campaigning with Frankie Ruffalo, who's a great candidate standing in a parliamentary by-election down there. If you can make it to Devon this Monday to help us out, please, please do. Give Sharon a shout on inquiries at forbritain.uk if you can help. Thanks a lot. Maybe I'll see you on Monday.